Victory Church, wherever you are, online, I just want you to know that we had the victory in Jesus' name because the battle belongs to the Lord, no matter what situation you're facing. Amen. Let's have a great time in God's presence this morning. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, yes. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory.
God, we declare the victory is yours, that all things can be done in your name, in the mighty name of Jesus. The victory is yours. You've already won. You've already made a way. We thank you, God. Jesus. Strengthen what 
need the Spirit of God in our lives more than ever. So welcome to everybody that's joining us this morning for City Church Online. It's great to have you joining us today. How are you going today, Amy? I'm good. How are you? I'm going pretty good. I think we're into week 14 of lockdown and we're... We haven't killed each other yet, so uh, I think we're doing pretty well. That's a world record. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, there are so many people who have joined us online this morning. Lindsay Harris, all the way, still in Nauru at this point. The Sinclairs have joined us. Henny, Grandma Henny has joined us. What about Lindsay Harris? He's the most quarantined guy in Australia, I reckon. He is. He's done weeks and weeks and weeks of uh, quarantining to go in and out of Nauru for work. And so, Lindsay, we love you and uh, keep pushing through. It's fantastic. Great to see you there. apparently Troy loves your jacket. Oh, thank you, Troy. It's good to have a bit of encouragement. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't give him any encouragement. (laughs) I was going to say it's made out of snake skins, but it's not really made out of snake skins. I wouldn't do that to you, Troy. We love our snakes. Uh, And the Roberts, they... They have joined us, Jillian Hussain. Yes, it is really there. Well, let's see. Let's see a side view We've of this little tummy. We've nearly hit 24 weeks. And Darren McMahon, <laughs> go the Panthers. Wow. Our Connect Group chat last night or yesterday afternoon was all about the Panthers. What about that win from the Panthers, though? It was amazing. And in the AFL, the Ds. And in the rugby, the Wallabies. It was a fantastic day for sport yesterday. And there's some boxing on today. There's so much oh, happening at the moment. It's great. It's, it's, uh, it's really exciting. Well, let's get a little bit serious. Okay. And we've got a couple of prayer requests um, that, are it, that people have um, sent us in throughout the week. And so this morning, we are going to pray for favour and strength during a difficult work season. Um, for a lovely family in our church. We're also going to pray for successful surgery um, for somebody who's got stomach cancer. And we're also going to pray for recovery of another, um, of a lady in our church who's got, uh, who's just had um, breast cancer surgery. And we're also going to pray for peace um, for Chris Roberts and his extended family after he lost his brother this week. So yeah, we're going to pray don't for that, pray? It's brother Mark. And really believe for God's peace of funerals this Wednesday as well. So Chris and Heather and uh, all of the family, we are sending our love and we've got all of our prayers towards you during this time. So come on, church family. Let's pray for each one of these needs and these requests that we have here in our hand this morning. And if you've got a request in your heart this morning, come on, let's lift our faith wherever we are at home and let's pray together and believe for miracles in Jesus' name. So Lord, this morning, we just thank you for your peace across this nation, uh, across this state, Lord Jesus. We thank you for it, Lord God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would make a pathway that we can come back to meeting and gathering together in person, together as your church, now, sooner rather than later. We pray for a miraculous way for that to happen in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for successful surgery and recovery, Lord God, from that surgery as well. That you be with those that are recovering, that are on our hearts this morning. And I just pray for, that they'll go from strength to strength in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for Chris and Heather and their incredible family. I pray for your strength and your peace and your comfort to surround them during this time. For the funeral this week, I pray give them clarity of thought. Help them to be able to organize all the things they need to organize. And I just pray for a beautiful uh, ceremony to be able to really celebrate Mark's life. And Lord, I just pray for those that are working through this season and are doing it tough. And I just pray for your strength in their workplace, Lord God. I pray for all of our frontline workers that you'd be with them. And during this season, I just pray sustain and strengthen your people. Every single person that's watching this morning, every person that calls City Church home, I pray for your strength, your favor, your blessing, your protection upon their lives. We thank you this morning for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, we also have a praise report. And uh, if you haven't yet seen, um, I wonder if he could actually just pop out from the other room. Mikey is saying, do you want to come out? Whoa. And I'll let Mikey actually let you know this praise report. He's coming. He's in the back room. I think that's room. why the drums just stopped playing. It did. They because, just stopped uh, playing. I can't even see Mikey. He's now required to, to come out. But Mikey is Mikey's actually going to give you a little praise report. So here you go. Whoa. <laughs> well, um, where am I looking? Here we go. Um, yeah, well, as you may have seen on social medias, me and my beautiful now wife, Samantha, Whoa. got married last Sunday. So, yeah, it's a bit of a surprise for a few people, I guess. <laughs> but um, we're loving life and we are 
just, you know, enjoying married life and getting used to it and spending all, all our time together in lockdown. So, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty much it. <laughs> How good is that? There, I think there was a photo that just came up, um, but uh, it was a bit of a surprise. There we go. There are some photos. Um, but it has been something that has been in the background for a couple of months that uh, we were aware about, um, parents were aware about. So uh, I just want to say that um, it's been a tough season for, for you and Sammy and extended family. And uh, we are so proud of you and Sammy and the way that you've handled um, the passing of Sammy's brother and just lockdown and everything else and taking on our young adults as well and, and, and being our creative director and and youth and all of that. I just want to say how proud we are of you with Sammy and uh, we are so excited for your future and we were just the word. So um, congratulations and we can't wait to be part of your future. <laughs> well done. Come on, exciting times. Come give him a hand in yeah. the chat. Give him some congratulations in the chat this morning. Well done, Mikey and Sam. Mr. and Mrs. Hussein. There's two Mr. and Mrs. Husseins yes, at City is. Church now. It's very exciting. Yes. But what are you gonna, how are you going to differentiate between the two of them? You can't call them senior because they're not seniors. Mm, maybe like junior and senior? No, is that okay? No, you can't. I said that. You can't say senior. <laughs> you can't say senior. There's some laughter in the room. <laughs> maybe mum and dad Hussein. Mum and dad is saying, okay, that sounds good. Well, let's, let's go with that. All right, so some serious business now, some more serious business. On the 13th of October, we have our fabulous AGM. And uh, obviously this year due to lockdown, we are doing it online. Um, if you want to attend online, you need to register on our website. So it is the 13th of October, 7.30 p.m. Jump onto our website and register for that, um, we will have financial documents to you prior to the event. You can submit your questions because it's going to be so confusing on the night doing it online. Submit your questions if you have any prior uh, via email and we'll be able to either answer them on the night or beforehand or however else. Um, but 7.30, 13th of October, put it in your diary. If you call City Church home, this is something for you to attend. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic, particularly if you're a member. But obviously, even if you're not a member, just come along and join the night and be part of it as we'll hear what's happening. It's a great report. And so excited to be able to share that with you as well. And we usually have ice creams at the AGM as well. So can I encourage you to get your ice creams your ready? You'll have to ice cream. Make sure you get your ice creams ready for it as well. We'll watch you on the screen. Uh, eating your ice cream at the same time but it's going to be fun so 7.30 on the 13th of October make sure you register for that one as soon as possible because that helps us to know we've got a quorum for that night as well so yeah thanks everyone it's going to be good and uh, we also have our kids online so all those parents um, who are if you're not receiving the email for anything to do with our kids at home kids church at home uh, please send us a dm or an email and we will put you on all of my kids church stuff goes to my husband and so i never actually get it until it pops up on facebook because he never tells me um, but if you have got young kids and you want to be a part of you know what happens with our city church kids at home i 100% recommend that you jump on at the moment they are doing um, fruits of the spirit there it is it's all on our screen all down here I'm trying to work this one out <laughs> our kids our kids team have done such a fabulous job we've had lollies dropped at our doorsteps we've had donuts we've had um, recently we've got a little card a miss you card so uh, if you aren't involved and you want your kids to be on our lists and those kind of things I encourage you to let us know. Send us an email. Hit us on our Facebook, on all on our social media. Maybe don't hit us on our Maybe Facebook, don't. but DM us, <laughs> direct message us, private message us. Now I'm starting to show my age because I'd actually <laughs> had to think about those. Fantastic. Yeah. Next Sunday we start a new series called People of the Way. It's going to be an incredible series through the month of October. I am really looking forward to it. And so I want to encourage you to join, uh, join us, tune in next Sunday. And throughout the whole month of October, we're going to be talking about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a follower of Jesus. People of the way, Christians were known in the early church as people of the way or followers of the way. And we're going to be talking about what that means. It's not just a, a set of um, theological doctrines, but it's a way of living. And so really excited about this series and really encouraging you with that as well. So yeah, join us for that starting next weekend. Well, that's it. 
it that's is, it. Uh, we, we do need to mention that this Sunday is our Compassion Sunday, so our Missions Sunday. And we have the amazing Anna, uh, who is going to bring the Word. Whoa. But we are going to have Marty and Ali. They're going to come back up and they're going to lead us through one more song before the fabulous Anna comes to give the Word this morning. Awesome. Enjoy, church.
to the Father I'm restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of all Shall not near, shall not fade By His blood and in His name In His freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ So good to have you with us online this morning. What a privilege it is to be with you, to open up God's Word again, hear what He has to say to us. There is a scene in the movie The Lion King where Mufasa says to his son Simba, remember who you are. Now Mufasa died when Simba was young, many of you will know the story. But he appears in the sky when he's older to bring him some words of wisdom. At the very end, as he's disappearing into the sky among the clouds and the stars, and Simba is chasing after him, longing for him to stay, to keep speaking with him, Mufasa says, remember, remember who you are, remember. And every time I read that word in the Bible, that scene comes to mind. I don't know if God sounds like Mufasa the lion, but that is the image that comes whenever I read the word remember. And God says to remember a lot in his word. In fact, in Deuteronomy, there is a specific thing that he wants his people to remember. Let me read a couple of verses to you. In Deuteronomy 5.15, he says, You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Deuteronomy 7, 18, you shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. Deuteronomy 16, 12, Sorry, Deuteronomy 15, 15. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this today. Deuteronomy 16, 12. You shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt and you shall be careful to observe these statutes. Deuteronomy 24, 18. But you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. And finally, Deuteronomy 24, 22, you shall remember you are a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this. It's pretty clear what God wanted his people to remember. And it was at this point that the Israelites were on the very verge of entering the promised land. Forty years before, God had rescued them from the slavery of Pharaoh and Egypt But for four decades, they had been traveling around the desert, wondering, wondering if God was going to fulfill his promise. He had fed them with manna from heaven to provide for them, carried them through, 
And now they were on the very verge of stepping into the land of milk and honey, a place where they would finally be safe. They could finally settle. They could raise up their families without fear of who was going to attack them. This was the promise that they had been waiting for. And so in the book of Deuteronomy, God is laying out his commands of how his people are to live now that they have reached the promised land. And as Ben and Amy said, today is Compassion Sunday. And this is a wonderful opportunity to remind ourselves of God's heart for the poor and respond. And so there's a particular passage and a particular command in Deuteronomy that I want to spend a bit of time with you on today to understand what is God's heart for the poor and why does he command us to follow in his footsteps. So if you've got your Bible with you or the Bible app on your phone, open up to Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 19 or you can follow on on the screen. It says, when you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the foreigner, the fatherless and the widow, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat your olive trees, you shall not go over them again. It shall be for the foreigner, the fatherless and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not strip it afterwards. It shall be for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this. In just this short paragraph, Moses mentions the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow three times. And throughout the Bible, these were known as the trio of the vulnerable, they were the most vulnerable people groups, particularly at that time. Vulnerable to abuse, vulnerable to exploitation, vulnerable to all the forces of being robbed or not taken care of. They were the ones who needed protection. And even today, women, children and refugees are a lot more vulnerable to abuse. And so God is wanting to call out and care for these vulnerable people. Embedded in the very fabric of society is this command to consider the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. From the outset, God is saying this is not an optional extra. This is not a peripheral thing to your faith. This is not when you've got excess or you're just feeling particularly generous. At the very core of God's heart is a desire to care for the vulnerable. And God could have reached out and provided for these people in the same way that he provided for the Israelites for 40 years. He could have given them manna from heaven. But instead, he chooses to work through his people. He says, don't go back. Leave that for the foreigner. Leave that for the fatherless. Leave that for the vulnerable. They need your excess. Care for the poor. And God provides two reasons as to why he's calling his people to have a heart for the vulnerable. The first one is in verse 19. It says, when you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. And here's the reason, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. Give to the poor that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. Now, this goes against every single business textbook that I have ever read. If you were to study an MBA, they would say, maximize your outputs, maximize your profits. Squeeze out as many products as you can so you can increase your revenue. And I've said it before, but so often we hold our wealth and our assets and our money with a tight fist. We think, I just need to hold it close. I need to protect it so that I have enough money to retire. And there's nothing wrong with accumulating wealth. But God in this passage is saying, unclench your fist. Because when you do, then I can bless you. If you hold your hand away from the poor, then I can't fill you with my goodness. I can't bless you in all the work of your hand. It's only when you open up your hand to you, the poor. Unclench your fist that God can bless that hand. 
See, if God can provide for his people for 40 years wandering in the desert, even bringing bread and meat from heaven, then he can look after you. Just as he feeds the birds and dresses the flowers, he can provide for you. And giving, the poor, giving to the poor is not a ticket to financial wealth, but it's an acknowledgement that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, that everything is his, that he can provide for our every need. And we do not need to fear. We don't need to go back. We can set aside things for the poor because we serve the God who created the world by a word, who said, let there be light and there was light. So we can trust him. We can unpry our fingers and open our hand to him and say, guide me, God. How am I to do with what you have given me? Sometimes people refer to a self-made millionaire or billionaire But there's no such thing as self-made. No one pushed themselves out of the womb and arranged lessons to learn how to read. We are all dependent on someone and ultimately all dependent on God. And so he says to his people, open out your hand to the poor that I may pour into it with my generosity. But the second reason that God commands his people to care for the poor is found in verse 22. He says, you shall remember that you are a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this. Now, the first reason makes sense. Be generous so that God can be generous to you. But what is he saying? Remember that you are a slave. What what has that got to do with leaving some wheat or olives or grapes for the poor in your vineyard? And what God is saying to his people is that when they look at the poor, He doesn't want them to look at them as less than them, but as one of them. He wants them to remember you were the ones who were oppressed. You were the ones who were vulnerable. You were the ones without a land. You were the ones that were poor. So open up your heart knowing what you have been given. Give not because it's a command, but because you know the gift that you have been given. Many of you will know the story of a man named Richmond Wandera. He was a former Compassion-sponsored child. And he tells the story of the day that his entire world changed. Some men came to his family and they told his mother and his brothers and his sisters that their father had been killed. He'd been murdered. He was a lawyer. His father was a lawyer, so they lived a comfortable life. But on that day, they were kicked out of their home. And with nowhere else to go, they went to one of the worst slums in Kampala, Uganda. Richmond says that that night, they spent the evening, they spent the whole night standing. It was raining and there were cracks in the roof. So he, his mother and all of his brothers and sisters could do nothing but stand as the floor flooded beneath them. He said the slum was full of abuse and exploitation, crime, prostitution, and things that a little boy should never be witness to. And all of a mo- within a moment, he was thrust into that world of poverty and vulnerability. He said a few years later, there was another day where another man came with news to their home. But this time, it wasn't to take away all of their hope, but to bring it. It was a pastor of the local church who had a compassion centre next to the slum and he said, Richmond, today you have a sponsor. A teenage girl named Heather had decided to sponsor this little Ugandan boy that she'd seen on a table. And he said from that moment, his life changed. He was able to go back to school. His family didn't have to worry if there was going to be food on the table They could be kept safe and protected. They were able to be moved into another home. Richmond went on to complete schooling and then he was supported to go and study a bachelor's degree in America. He then went on to get a master's and then a PhD in the UK. But Richmond knew that he had to come back to Uganda. He knew that that was his call. He knew the gift that he had been given and he wanted to pass that on. And so he came back and he set up what's called the Pastors Discipleship Network. And over the last 10 years, Richmond has been training up over 5,000 pastors across Africa. 
And if you can think about the ripple effect of that one decision that that teenager Heather made, she invested in the life of a little boy named Richmond. He is now investing in an organization that is training up and equipping 5,000 pastors to preach the gospel all across Africa. Think about the multiplication of those men and women as they go, being trained up from the word to go and invest in their communities and share the hope of Jesus. Richmond was in Australia before COVID broke out and I remember chatting with him and he said, I always go back to the slum that I grew up in. By what only could be the grace of God, he is now the senior pastor of the church of the Compassion Centre that he grew up in. But he said, I always return to that slum because I want to look at the faces of the little boys and girls in that slum. He said, because I recognise me. I see and I remember what it's like to have no hope, to have your dreams taken away, to not know where your next meal is coming on. And he said, that's what I need to keep going, to keep giving, to keep investing, to keep pouring out myself for those in need. And although many of us wouldn't have grown up in physical poverty, we have all been poor. We have all been cut off from God in a spiritual sense. We have all been oppressed and vulnerable. We have all been in a pit needing to be rescued. Ephesians 2 says, Ephesians 2.12 says, Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, verse 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. See, God was reminding the Israelites to remember that they were slaves. And we weren't slaves under the hand of Pharaoh or Egypt, but we've all been slaves to sin. We didn't walk through the Red Sea on dry land, but we have walked through storms and waves and struggles on the dry land of God's promises. God hasn't fed us manna coming down from heaven, but he has fed us with his peace and his hope in our wandering and our worry. We too need to remember that we have been set free. One of the amazing things about the story of the Good Samaritan is that we might sometimes be the Levite. We might sometimes be the Pharisee. Sometimes we might even be the Good Samaritan. But we've all been the man on the side of the road. We've all been the one without God in this world, without hope. Worshipping the idols of wealth and self chasing and pursuing happiness but never getting there we've all needed God to rescue us and it was Jesus that came along and picked us up and put us on his donkey and it wasn't two gold coins that he had to pay to the innkeeper it cost him his life for him to redeem us and so now I want to encourage you to give because of you of what you have been given I don't want you to sponsor a child or to give to compassion because you feel guilty or out of compulsion. I want you to give out of the magnitude of what has been given to you. So we're going to cut off to a video right now and then I'm going to come back out and give you some ways that you can respond. Baik, terima kasih. Fungsi papan data anak untuk mengetahui anak-anak yang terdaftar di PTA berapa seluruhnya berapa yang dapat sponsor dan berapa yang belum punya sponsor teman dapat sponsor saya sakit hati karena tidak dapat sponsor Setiap kali dia kasih tahu sama saya bagaimana saya mama, anak-anak yang lain sudah atas sponsor saya belum dapat. Dan saya mama berdoa juga, tapi saya tidak pernah dapat. Tunggu anak, tidak mungkin. Nanti Tuhan yang atur. Saya bilang begitu sama dia. Tiga empat bulan ke depan, bahwa anak-anak ini akan memiliki sponsor melalui 
tangan-tangan Tuhan untuk menjamah hati para yang punya yang bisa peduli kepada anak Tuhan akan memberikan yang terbaik buat keluarga ini ada sukacita Asti keluarganya Asti mendapat sponsor dan ini surat dari sponsor yang buat Asti boleh asli buka terima kasih banyak bawa anak saya baik saya kasih masuk PPA saya hari ini saya bangga sekali tapi Tuhan yang balas saya tidak mampu balas tapi Tuhan yang balas tidak pernah saya mimpi bahwa sponsornya hati hari ini ada tapi saya bangga sekali sehingga saya jatuh air mata terima kasih banyak berlimpah-limpah kasih senang senang mereka anak-anak itu merasa dekat dengan sponsornya dan jadi ketika mereka menceritakan isi surat seperti itu anak-anak merasa luar biasa bahwa itu tidak bisa dibayangin seperti itu Asti nama kuri ini dan aku senang senang menjadi sponsormu mungkin pikirnya ya sekedar komunikasi saja tetapi lebih daripada itu kedekatannya lebih dekat sekali dan saya berterima kasih kepada Tuhan yang bisa memberikan sponsor kepada anak sebagai anak dan bapak dan saya berterima kasih kepada compassion sebagai jembatan yang dapat menghubungkan yang ada di seberang bisa menjadi satu itu kebanggaan saya dan saya merasa senang sekali The last 10 years, the number of people living in poverty has consistently decreased. And then last year, as we all know, COVID came along. And for the first time since 1998, the number of people being thrust below the poverty line radically increased. We got set back 10 years of gains. And so what's happened is that the pandemic doesn't discriminate, but it disproportionately impacts the poor. So more and more people have been thrust below the poverty line, but at the same time, Compassion uses opportunities like concerts and conferences and church services to give people the opportunity to sponsor. And so as more people have been lifted into, has been gone into poverty, we've had less opportunity to help them. And it's left us with a gap. And for Compassion, that gap is 175,000 unsponsored children. And so I want to encourage you this morning to think about what can I set aside for the poor? If you've been moved to sponsor this morning, we're going to put a link on the chat that you can click on that has some children from our partner churches over in the Philippines. We also have some children on that link that uh, only have a couple of years, one or two years left in the program, but they were cancelled by their sponsors during covid and so we really want to see them got a sponsor to finish out the program well. And then another way that you can give is by giving a one-off donation. You can go onto the City Church website through the Missions Giving and just mark it as Compassion. And we're going to give a project gift to one of our partner churches over in the Philippines to help them during this challenging time. I want to thank you so much, City Church. You are a generous church. I want to thank you again for giving because of what you have been given. So I implore you to consider sponsoring a child, consider giving a one-off gift. And as we finish our time together, I want to go back to the reason that we're here, that we've all been set free from slavery. We're no longer under the oppression of sin. 
And that's because of Jesus. We give because of what we have been given, but I want to give you an opportunity today. Maybe you haven't yet received that gift. Maybe you haven't yet invited Jesus into your heart. Maybe you're still in that pit and you need him to come and lift you out, put your feet on a rock and give you a new song. So if that's you this morning, I want you to bow your head and close your eyes wherever you are and pray this prayer for me, with me and invite Jesus into your heart. Dear God, I thank you that you have saved us. This morning, I want to invite you into my heart. I want to stop chasing all the other idols that have oppressed me in my life. I want to follow you. I believe with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I want to follow him today. In Jesus' name, amen. You can watch if the you are new or have steps. made a decision to follow Jesus, we'd love for you to head to our website, citychurchau.com. Scroll down to the I'm new or follow Jesus tab. Once you click on that, a form will appear. Fill out your name, your email and a message and send it off. Once we get this, one of our staff will contact you about the decision you have made and how to best follow you up from here. Well, what an incredible message we've heard today and been so encouraged to be able to partner together to really work towards seeing poverty eliminated and be able to see young lives impacted and transformed from our generosity together. And I just want to encourage you, church, together we are collectively able to make a huge difference. And I want to thank you for your generosity and I want to encourage you, if you want to sponsor a child, as Anna has spoken about this morning, there's ways to do that. We've put that into the chat for how you can do that or contact us if you want more information. And obviously there's opportunities for that one-off gift towards it as well. If you do that through the City Church Missions account, we'll be able to collate that together and give that collectively to Compassion as well. Just market Compassion in the gift that you give and we'll be able to give that together. And I want to encourage you also, if you've made that decision today to follow Jesus, we'd love to help you in that decision as that video is shown and really help you in your journey of faith as well. Well, that's it for this Sunday. Don't forget to register for our AGM on the 13th of October online at City Church AU forward slash events. Fantastic. Well, I think we're all blessed by that message today from Anna. And so give us some encouragement in the chat as well this morning. But Anna, thank you very much for bringing the word this morning and encouraging us. And we're really looking forward to the next Sunday as we start our new series, People of the Way. Church, we cannot wait to see you in person again, hopefully sooner rather than later. Let's be praying. Let's be believing for that and opportunities for that to open up so that we can do that together as a church. But in the meantime, let's keep loving one another and keep loving God and moving forward together in Jesus' name. Well, be blessed and have an incredible rest of your Sunday. And we'll talk to you very soon.